Hi guys, what's up? It's Tarun here and uh, wish you a happy new year and in this video we are going to continue with the HTML tutorial and just remember that in every video we are moving plenty of steps towards becoming a better web developer. Okay. So before starting off with the tutorial I would like to mention this. Um, once I complete the series I'm going to push the whole of the HTML code which I use throughout the series onto my GitHub profile. I'll leave the link down in the description below. But all you need to know now is you just go to the link and click here and you'll have this download zip. Just download it and unzip it and you can use the HTML code. Okay. But to be uh, short, GitHub is a version control system where you create timestamps and you can get to those timestamps whenever you want uh, in case you mess up with your code uh, there is always a backup option available that is version control system uh, I'll probably make a um, tutorial on github too soon but let's continue with our HTML series for now so in this uh, tutorial I'm going to use Atom it's a text editor. Remember, I've told you many text editors, so it's one of them. Atom is awesome. So before moving on with the tutorial, I would like to show you a package in Atom called Atom Live Server. So to install this package, you need to go to File, Settings, and uh, here, Install. And in the search packages, just type atom hyphen live hyphen server and hit enter uh, wait for it so we get this atom live server just hit install if you're wondering what atom live server is in the previous tutorial if you remember uh, we were writing the code then we were going onto the browser and re reloading the page and all those things but when you have Atom Live Server installed, as you are writing the code and whenever you hit save, the it, it itself is going to automatically say reload the page and fetch the content from the HTML file. Okay, so that is Atom Live Server. It will come in handy when you are uh, like experimenting features or teaching somebody, like how I am doing. So let's wait for it to install and then we can proceed with our tutorial. By the time it installs. I would like to show you what we did in the previous tutorial. Here is a file which we used for the previous tutorial. So let's just recap very quickly. So doc type HTML tells the browser that the document type is HTML. It's not necessary, but actually it's a good practice to use it. Then all the HTML documents start with HTML tag. Then you have the head tag, you have the title where this one, this thrn shiv slash html that is this title part and you have the body within the body we'll have uh, the actual content you're seeing this actual content everything is must be inside the body at least in most, most of the cases then you have h1 to h6 where h1 is the largest and h6 is the smallest let's see if it's installed yep, it's installed now just now, once it's installed, just go to packages and if you don't find it, oh, it's down here. So you just hit start server and wait for it to start. By the time it starts, let's just continue with our recap. So you have the P, okay. Oh, what is it showing? If it just shows like this, then you just click hit on HTML1, then boom, you're here. Okay, so we have the paragraph tag that is this one this is a paragraph we have given the color so it shows up in blue and then we have the anchor tag a those are the links which we have here and the image img src src means the source from where the image is getting loaded then the width specifies the this measurement and height gives this measurement and we have to remember we have to close all the tags like uh, body and HTML but there are some tags in HTML which need not be closed for example this IMG tag which does not have a closing braces but I'll just tell you later like what we need to use um, to make the code better so now let's proceed with the tutorial 
uh, one thing I would like to tell you here all the tags are being written in small letters right you could also use uppercases if I use capital P here and close it with capital P and I save it it's still going to be this is a paragraph okay so you could use uppercases but it's always a better choice to use smaller cases it's like a standard one by the community so please use smaller cases now let's create a new HTML file and continue with our tutorial in the new file let's name it HTML 2 dot html save it so this is the html2 we do not need the head settings so just go to the html2 and let's see so let's copy the boiler code from here if you don't know what boiler code is it's actually a default um, thing which you need all the time to do the stuff so this is kind of boiler code so save it or just manually go here and type html2 html okay there it goes so if it doesn't load please try those try that thing guys so we're inside this and let's give body a color so to specify a color you use background color background color let's give it um, dgd save it so you get that color uh, if you're wondering what I'm using to save, it's Control plus yes. Okay, and now we are inside the body. Sorry for that, guys. We're inside the body, and within the body, now let's first. I told you there's something called tooltip. We're going to experiment that. So within the paragraph tag, let's type something. Uh, let's tell we are awesome save it it appears there now when i hover this text over it it doesn't show me anything okay but there's an attribute called title t-i-t-l-e equals to and within double quotes you just give um hover save it now when i hover over it you see that tooltip which we get at Tooltip can be brought about using this title. Now, let's make it a little bigger. To do that, we use style attribute, and within the style attribute, we use sorry for that. Within the style attribute, we use font size and whatever the size you want. Uh, there's actually many um, units for font sizes and other sizes we use in HTML. They are pixels, which is px, and you have um, m, em, and rem. I'll walk you through each one of these in the further tutorials, but not now. I don't want to confuse you. So just uh, start typing 22 pixels, maybe. Save it. Good. And now, what did I want to show you? Yeah, I want to show you this thing. So now just guess what is going to happen when I type these. We are awesome. Yes, we are. Okay, now I've typed this. When I save this, you may be thinking that this SVR must come in the next line. When I save it, no, it doesn't. It comes in the same line. Why? Because HTML code are not much bother about the white space we use in the any of the tags so if you want to send it to the next line you have to use br save see it goes to the next line so when you use the br tag whatever is there after the br will come to the next line okay at least in most of the cases so this is one of the thing now let's try one more thing this is copy this Let's use a br so that we make sure that we go to the next line. And now, let's use this. Yeah, you are right. Save. You didn't come to the next line. Okay, 
but it doesn't follow the white space also you may ask me yes it doesn't so what you need to do if you want it exactly like this I'll show you just copy it so that we get the difference give another break and paste this you may ask me why I'm using this I told you some of the tags doesn't have and closing tag so you use this one this forward slash just before ending this one so that it looks neat more than that not more than that nothing more than that so just instead of the P we will be using PRE yeah PRE and PRE save it cool right we get it properly so this is about the PRE tag now next let's move on with some style styling of these things so until now we've seen the font size and the background color now uh, I want to show you about font families okay so now writing this styling within this tag is known as inline inline styling but if you write the styling within the head tag you could also do that that is known as internal styling but if you give the styling outside in a file and link it to the HTML it is known as external styling I'll give you an example for each one of these inline styling is what we've done here and internal styling is what I'm going to show you so just give style and end with style and whatever goes inside this gives you the internal styling so to do the internal styling you would need IDs classes or at least the tag tag names so you could either use body and start giving everything or P or start giving the rules but if you want unique I mean unique styles for each of this element you need to use IDs or classes now first example let's use body so that you get an idea so body open flower bracket close flower bracket and just give enter so you have the body right now now whatever rules CSS rules you're going to apply here is going to get applied to the body but there is a preference order if you give the inline styling here and if I use another for example if I use another background color here for example if I use red okay save it it's not going to appear there because this rule is going to be overwritten by this rule suppose we didn't have this one okay let's just cut it and save it see it's going to appear but when we have a rule here and whatever comes before it will not get applied okay so the preference is first one for the inline second preference for internal and third preference for external so now let's move on with our internal styling I want to show you the font family so the way you do that is that is the changing of fonts actually so font family hmm. there are actually plenty of fonts available you could also go to Google fonts and choose fonts. I'll show you later when we do the external CSS thing. For but for now, I'll just use mm, moon space. Save. Look, the font style has changed. But please don't think I'm a fan of mono space. Absolutely not. I just wanted to show you something cool that you could actually differentiate between. So font family, next font size. You have seen there. Then we have text align and background color that also we have seen. There are a lot of styling um, attributes which we have to go through. I will take you through each one of them in the future tutorials. But that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for staying with me. See you in the next video. Goodbye.